It's hard to ignore the anti-Semitism that is now inherently among us, that is not just in the news and on TV, but it's in our backyard, it's in our own home. And it's scary and it's nerve-wracking, but I have a plan that I would love to propose to help us overcome and to help us manage and to help us recognize that if we can follow a certain plan, maybe, just maybe, we can and will overcome. So I'd like to start off by first recognizing that I feel like we're asking the wrong questions. It is normal and it is natural for people to be questioning, why is this happening? And it makes sense, but at the end of the day, I don't feel like that question is helpful. Because whether or not we can ever fully identify and pinpoint the reasoning is not so relevant when you consider that even if I understand why it's happening, it's still happening. And so it's normal, and I get it. People are talking about, well, it's Donald Trump's fault, and it's the NRA and gun rights, and the Jewish people are bringing it on themselves. And I don't feel like that's so helpful, because even if it was one of those ideas, which I'm not sure it is, it's still happening. The question that I believe we need to be asking ourselves is, how? How should we respond knowing that this is now the reality that we are faced with? You know, it helps remind me of one of my favorite movies <laughs> growing up, My Cousin Vinny. I'm not sure if we've ever seen this movie. But there's a scene in the movie where Joe Pesci is going out to go uh, hunting deer. And he turns to his fiance, Marissa Tomei, and he says, what color pants should I wear? And I'm going to paraphrase now, but Marissa Tomei says, if a deer was getting shot by you, you think he'd care what color pants you were wearing? Right? That's the uh, tone her accent. So it almost doesn't really matter why. But let's focus on how. What should our response be? What should we be doing? How do we, how do we move forward? So I'll go through a progression of different ideas, and we'll start with the most basic. Number one, it is very clear that we need to be more alert and more aware when we are in public. It means that some luxuries that we've been afforded up until this point in time are no more. And that's okay. It's not necessarily good or bad, it's just different. Right, so maybe if you've ever been walking in the street and texting at the same time, or walking with AirPods in your ear and listening to music or talking on a phone call, right? that's something that ultimately might distract you and is not going to be conducive to you protecting and maximizing your ability to be the most safe. On that note, while in public and engaging in the outside world, we need to be mindful of our behavior, the words we use and the things we say and the actions that we commit. And everybody is watching. And here's the unfortunate part. We are right now in the midst of an unjust, unfair situation. We are being attacked simply because of our identity and who we are. It is extremely unfair and it is not fun. We don't need to bring more negativity and more in, of, of an injustice on ourselves. So it means that when you're in the street, how are you behaving, how are you acting? It means that when you're going away on vacation and you're in the airport, how are you behaving and how are you acting? Are you trying to take advantage of people and are causing a whole scene and a ruckus? Or are you doing what you need to be doing because that's our civil duty to making this uh, society a more safe and enjoyable place to live? Next idea about a response of what is in our control of how we can maximize our own comfort and our own well-being. You know, this past Shabbat when I was walking to shul, it was a very odd but interesting sight. I walked by a number of different shuls and I saw security guards, police officers, and state troopers. 
with guns, right? So state troopers are not necessarily hired by the city. They operate through the state. They're those like big, uh, you know, tough looking. They wear like these brown hats and these big boots. They're like real deal operators. And you know what? I felt safe. And I know that some of us felt a bit overwhelmed to see that in, you know, our respective prayer <coughs> locations. But there is not a price you can put on the safety and of the comfort that you feel when somebody else is willing to sacrifice their own life for your safety and for your well-being. And so here's a form of response I feel like is very appropriate. Say thank you. There are people who are literally willing to risk their own lives just so that you can go to shul, just so that you can go to school. And these people are most likely not Jewish. They might be, but usually, in most instances, they're not. When you walk in the morning, greet them and say hello, good morning. When you're leaving for the night, say good night. When you see them and they're not engaged in, in duty, we don't want to distract them, but when you have an opportunity and if you have a moment, say thank you. It will go a long way if the people who are responsible for your own well-being know how you feel. Know that when they're doing their job, it helps you to be at peace, to be your best self. And if people know that and recognize that, it'll go a long way in order for us to get more of that, in order for us to develop a beautiful relationship between law enforcement and civilian. The next form of response might be a little bit difficult to listen to and to process, but here's what I want everybody to know about me. I'm a very transparent person, and I'm known to tell people what they need to hear and not necessarily what, the, what they want to hear, and sometimes that makes people feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to call the spade a spade, and I'm going to offer a thought about how I believe we should be using these experiences in terms of response. I find it a bit hypocritical, I'm going to be honest. That now, when we're the ones who are under the microscope, when we're the ones who are under the, light, the spotlight, and we now know what it feels like to be victimized and to be treated unfairly simply because of the fact that we are Jewish and our identities, that now, all of a sudden, everybody is now in agreement, right? This is something that should never be. No person in this country should ever have to be assaulted or victimized simply because of who they are. It's great that we finally joined the party, but I can't say in all honesty that I've been around everybody who's been echoing that same message for all of members of society. So I think we need to be careful with the way we speak and the language we use, even though I don't believe we mean to cause harm when we do this sometimes. But it's not nice to call a black person an Abid. It's not nice to recognize a situation as gay. And it's not nice to demean and to look at others in society as beneath you. We are all human beings that all share space. And you know what? Yes, we have a, an obligation, we have a duty to make sure that every single person that we share space with all feels safe and protected. We're in that group. We should feel that just as much as anybody else, but we have an obligation to show the rest of the world that not only do we understand the message, but we're willing to put it into action. Last idea about response and how we can possibly make this situation just a little bit less uncomfortable. When you think of the word Jew, there's so many different subgroups and so many different names that come to mind. Just within our respective community alone, right? You have Syrian, you have Egyptian, you have Shami, you have Halabi, Right? And then even extend it out of the community. 
There's the Satmar Jew, and there's a Reform Jew, and there's a Conservative Jew, and then there's a white hat, and a black hat, and a this hat, and a this thing. And I'm a bit perplexed, because it's really, really sad that the people who don't like us, the very people who are inflicting pain onto us, when they look at us, they just see one thing. They see Jew. They look at me, and they look at you, and they look at every other person, irrespective of their respective group or label. And it doesn't matter if he's wearing a black hat, and it doesn't matter if he's wearing a gray hat, it doesn't matter if she's wearing a skirt, and it doesn't matter if she has a Jewish star necklace, it doesn't matter. When they look at us, they see one thing, Jew. And it's a bit sad that our enemies and the people who hate us have us more united than us. And if I'm being real and if I'm being candid, I can't say in all honesty that the Jewish people do a great job of uniting one another. Because there's always a reason about why I can't associate with this particular group. This one's too religious, this one's not religious enough, this one doesn't follow my laws, this one doesn't do this, this one doesn't do that. And, and here's what I want us to understand. We feel uncomfortable and we feel nervous. You know what would help us feel less nervous and less uncomfortable? If we were able to move all together. There is strength in numbers. And if we can understand that if we're going to get through this, we need to get through it together, then and only then will we maximize our chances to overcome this very, very difficult hardship. This past Sunday, there was a beautiful event where all of the Jewish people got together. There were thousands upon thousands of people who got together to walk and to show support for this very, very topic. Great, but is that it? Is that the only time we can find an opportunity to come together as a people and to recognize that these are my brothers and these are my sisters and if I have them by my side, life might be just a little bit less tricky? Or can we start to finally shed away these labels? And yes, there's differences. And yes, this person learns in Kolel all day, and this person eats Fruity Pebbles on Pesach. But you know what? We're all Jew. When somebody from the outside looks at us and wants to hurt us, they see one thing, and I think it's time that we saw the same. So I understand that life is a little bit tricky right now. Here's what I know. History has shown that we will overcome. God made a promise to our forefathers and time and time again when the outside world has tried to do harm to us, they have learned that that is not an allowable reality that he will stand for. The Jewish people will overcome and we will be okay, but it's all about how. How is this going to happen? What is our response going to be? And I think if we can take some of these ideas, I think if we can start to understand that we need to be a little bit more mindful about how we are when we engage in the outside world. I think if we can understand that there is a responsibility of how we speak and how we engage and how we treat other people. And I believe and I know that if we can learn how to unite and to move in numbers, we will overcome. It will happen, but how will you respond? Shabbat shalom. Thank <laughs> you.